Hello, this is Jenny from Designs with Paper. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel today. I have another card video as part of my Christmas card and craft series for 2021, and I will be making a two for one, <laughs> two cards, one video. I am using the Honey Bee Stamps Winter Bouquet Die Set that I have just recently purchased. I couldn't, couldn't resist. I try not to buy a ton of new stuff, but I couldn't resist. And I will be using these two pieces of pattern paper that Honeybee included in my order. I have gone through my scrap bin and cut all of the dies out that I will be using. And I have cut two of the candles, um, all of the greenery in varying shades of green cardstock. I cut two sets of leaves for the poinsettias and four or five pine cones. I literally don't remember right now. <laughs> I also cut out one of the gold, one of the bows out of some gold cardstock. And I am going to add some dimension and just kind of ramp it up a little bit with some ink blending. So to start with, I'm going to push everything off to my side here and we're going to add some shadows to these white candles. I have another video, which I will link at the end, about how to add shadows to white so that they look like not just a flat image. And I will be working on this waffle flowers ink blending mat. And I am using Altenew inks today because they were on the top of my drawer. <laughs> I have pulled out a very light gray. I think it's called Morning Frost. And I'm just going to speed through the ink blending a little bit here. And I have added some shadows to the sides and a little bit on the bottom. And the top of the candle has that kind of circle on the front to indicate, you know, to make it dimensional. <laughs> And I am adding a little bit of ink to that section as well, just to kind of pull it to the foreground so that you can see in real life in the pictures that it does have a little bit of dimension to it. For the greenery, I have pulled out three different shades of green and they are evergreen, forest glades, and frayed leaf. And I will be using my pickup tool here to add all of these um, lighter shades of green to my ink blending mat. And I will add ink to mostly one side so that there's a shadow on one side of each um, leaf or piece of greenery. I do go back as I'm kind of assembling things and some of the leaves I turned over so that they were facing or arced in another direction and I will add some more ink to the back side of some of these leaves. Um, I will go ahead and pick up the leaves from my second shade of green and do the same thing. And when I was die cutting these, I just kind of grabbed scrap paper from my little bin on my desk my little pieces of scrap that are less than the card front size and just cut. I didn't really pay attention to how many of each leaf I was cutting from each green, except for the poinsettia. The poinsettia leaves, so the poinsettia flower is all leaf, right? Some of the leaves are red, some are pink, you know, some are green. I cut one layer of green leaves for the poinsettias. And those are right here. And I am adding a little bit more ink blending to the poinsettias because they do have some score detail down the center of the leaves. And I wanted those to kind of jump out as well. And, and I guess technically because I'm adding shadow, I'm pushing them back, <laughs> but I'm making them more visible. I have cut the poinsettia in two different colors of red, just because that's what was in my scrap. <laughs> and I am adding a little bit of crimson ink to the outside edges and the top to again, make those score lines a little more pronounced. I have pulled out a brown. I think it is um, espresso, Altano espresso ink. And the pine cones also have those kind of score lines on top. So I am also adding some ink to the score lines to kind of pull out those layers of pine cone. And I have a pine cone card from last year's release that I will also link at the end, I think. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to start doing some assembling here, and I have cut the flames for these candles out of some gold um, cardstock, and they are little and fidgety, <laughs> so I am trying to get them to stick to my pickup stick so that I can add them to those little glue dots I put on top of the candle. And of course, I'm picking them up backwards, like the front sides are down, because they're like cats, except in reverse. They land on the front side down every time, right? These little die cut pieces. Okay, anyway, <laughs> now that we have the flames in place, we are going to go ahead and move on to assembling some of the other things. I will add some of the 
leaves to the back of the pine cones. I will assemble the poinsettias. For the poinsettias, I wanted the petals to kind of um, roll in. So I am taking my bone folder and um, breaking the fibers up in the paper, rolling them in toward themselves. And that just kind of, um, well, when you break the fibers, it makes them a little more pliable so that you can adjust them and, and curve them and give them a little bit of dimension. And so I will do that to each of the layers of the poinsettia. And how do you say that? Do you say poinsettia? Do you say poinsettia? I'm never sure exactly how it's supposed to be said, but I know sometimes when I hear people say it, I kind of think, am I saying it wrong or are they saying it wrong? <laughs> I say poinsettia. I don't know. Tell me, leave me a comment down below. Tell me how you think it's supposed to be said. Anyway, <laughs> moving on, we're going to go ahead and keep breaking up these fibers so that I can start assembling the poinsettias. And I am going to layer each section of the leaves um, kind of off kilter or skewed. I don't want to line them up exactly stack on stack and stack, even though they do graduate down in smaller sizes. I want the leaves to kind of line up in between like that. So here we go. I'm going to kind of speed this up again, and hopefully I speed it up fast enough that you're not taking a nap already. The centers of the poinsettia also have a, a die, and it cuts out just a whole bunch of little um, circles, but not circles. It looks like bubbles almost. And so I cut that out of gold cardstock as well. So one down, one to go, same thing, at, um, assembling them a little bit off, not, not stacked up where the leaves are just right on top of each other. It adds a little bit of dimension. It adds to that layered look. And I will adhere these with just a little bit of glue in the center so that the petals can um, fluff up. Now, if I put them in an envelope, for sure they're not going. These cards will not stay fluffed up, right? But the recipient can then fluff up the petals on the poinsettias or the leaves on the poinsettias if they wish. For the pine cones, I have four pine cones, but I have only enough leaves to put two leaves on three pine cones. See, I didn't count. <laughs> I did have two of each color of leaf at least, <laughs> and I am just going to kind of. I don't know, fake it. Probably I shouldn't have put the leaves on until I had the pine cones aligned on the card how I wanted it, but whatever. <laughs> We're just going with it here. I have sped this up just a little bit because I promise you I was much, much slower in real life. <laughs> I probably could speed it up just a little bit more on this part and you would not have, although now you have time to go refill your drink, right? Go get a fresh cup of water, whatever it is you're drinking today. Right. And, and then come back and I'll still be doing the pine cones. <laughs> and, um, pine cones. Honeybee Stamp has a pine cone die that came out last year that makes these three dimensional pine cones. They're fabulous. And I am going to use that in another card this, this year, even though it's last year's, I don't care if it's last year's die. I love it. And it makes fabulous 3d pine cones. Anyway, back to these cards. There are these two little teeny tiny branches and I did not know exactly what they were supposed to be. Turns out there's a die in here that cuts out a whole bunch of these little red circles. Yeah, they're berries. Yep, yeah, they're berries. So I am going to go ahead and glue berries onto each of these stems. Now I put down my, um, gosh, what is this thing called? It's from Stampin' Up. I bought it a gazillion years ago. Glue sticks to it so that it doesn't stick to my fingers, but then also the, the cardstock doesn't stick to the mat. Um, no stick mat, no stick craft mat. I don't know what it's called. It's a little like five by five inch square piece of um, silicone or rubber or something that the, the glue will stick to, but the cardstock won't, which is really nice when you're trying to glue these fidgety little pieces. And these were fidgety, like the little berries were sticking to my pickup stick a little bit more than they were sticking to the glue, which is kind of funny because sometimes my pickup stick doesn't want to pick up anything at all. Yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I have heard that you can wash the tip of it with a baby wipe and once it air dries, it gets sticky again. And there's a real chance that I just kind of smashed it into some glue at some point in time in this project. So probably that's why it's super sticky. I don't know. Anyways, when I placed my order with Honeybee Stamps, I 
got a whole um, pack of their four and a quarter by five and a half inch um, Christmas paper that I made a ton of Christmas cards with. And the video footage wasn't great because I was doing a lot of hanging over the paper. My head was in the way a lot. But if you hop over to my Instagram, and I will link that down below, you can see the photo of those cards that I made with the honeybee stamp paper. Okay, now it's time to figure out how we're going to put these cards together. I am putting one candle on each card. Now that card on the left, the background of that paper is white and so it's a little bit blending in. So I'm going to use a lot of the greenery on the card on the left. So I decided to put the poinsettias on the card on the right because the greenery won't stand out as much on that card either. So I've added the pine cones to the bottom of one candle and the poinsettias to the bottom of the other. And I'm just going to kind of pick up each piece of greenery and figure out how I want it to go. Some of them were arced in one direction and I needed them to arc the other direction. So I just flipped them over, but then I pulled out my blending brush and added some more ink to it. So it would still have some shadow and dimension. Um, I'm just kind of playing. I don't really have a plan. I just pick something up and put it down until I thought it looked good. And then I pick something else up. And that is kind of generally how I work, <laughs> which is how come sometimes it feels like or probably looks like I'm just in a chaotic, creative space. That is my life. My brain goes 100 miles an hour and my fingers can't keep up. I am adding that fourth pine cone to the card with the points ideas and adding a little bit of greenery to this as well. And once I have decided I have them all at least mostly how I want them to be, then I have to figure out how to glue them onto the card front, right? So in comes the crafter's best kept secret in the world. You ready for this? Glad press and seal. I know. This is supposed to be used in your kitchen. My box stays in my craft room because I can take this press and seal down and flatten it on top of this card and pick up all of those pieces of die cut imagery at the same time. So it will flip the whole card front over. Oh, and this paper double sided. Each piece had a different uh, picture on each side. Super cool. Anyway, I digress. So now I can flip this over and make sure all the greenery is where I want it to be. And I am going to speed through this and add some glue to the back of these die cuts. Now, the only downside to this is that the die cuts on the front don't have any glue on them, but now that I kind of know where things are supposed to be, I can just pick them up with my reverse tweezers, the ones that you have to push to open instead of push to close, and pick them up, add some glue, and put them right back down. Super easy. Love, love, love my press and seal in my craft room. This was a little bit trickier because the poinsettias are dimensional because I curled up the petals or the leaves on them. So I took the poinsettias off and put the greenery and the pine cone back how I wanted it and then used the press and seal to pick up the images or the die cuts on this card. And then I can figure out where the poinsettias need to be after. I mean, because they're huge. They're going to take up a good portion of the card anyway. And I am just using my tweezers to kind of fiddle with things and because at this point my fingers are super sticky. Let's remember it's me and liquid glue. We are frenemies. I love liquid glue and what it does for my card projects. I hate that it sticks to my fingers all the time. I am such a messy crafter. I don't know. And I played with this for a hot minute and then did not pick up my press and seal. It's right there on the side of my desk. You can see it on camera right there on the left. Forgot all about it. And then it kept sticking to the sleeve on my sweatshirt. I'm like, dude, what is going on? Oh, yeah, the press and seal. <laughs> oh, well, <laughs> we went old school with this card, which is okay. Because like I said, those poinsettias would not have stuck to the press and seal. Or they would have and nothing else would have. So it turns out it's okay. Did take me a little bit longer. Is a little bit fidgetier. But it's okay. That's what this process is all about. Now I will go ahead and add some glue to the back of those poinsettias and we are almost done. We are rocking and rolling. So I'm going to put the lid on my glue so I don't spill it. Yes, I have done that before. And here are my two finished card fronts. So let's make cards. I have a piece of heavyweight cardstock. This is 110 pound white cardstock. I don't know what brand it is. Nina, Simon, Stampin' Up! I don't know. I could have got it at Walmart. 
I don't know. Except it's way thicker than the 110 pound cardstock at Walmart because it's not really printer paper. Anyway, <laughs> this is an eight and a half by 11 inch piece of paper cut in two at four and a quarter. And I am scoring it at the five and a half inch line to make two cards, two A2 size cards, which means that they are four and a quarter inches by five and a half inches. That is an American A2 or a US A2 size card. I know that in other places in the world, paper's not exactly the same size. So this is a US A2 size. And I am just lining up those bottom corners and using my bone folder to score that fold, give it a nice, clean, crisp edge. And I am going to go ahead, that one folded crooked, so I just flipped it inside out, and then I can fold it straight. For me, it's a lot easier if they don't line up the first time to just flip it inside out instead of try and, and reinforce a, a better fold. Because my card fronts are so dimensional, I am adding the adhesive to the front of my card, which is okay because these card fronts are the same size as the front of the card. They are four and a quarter by five and a half inches. I did not trim them down because the die cuts took up all the space and I didn't want to. <laughs> and this one was upside down, so I had to flip it right side up so that I didn't glue my card on upside down, which I totally have also done that before. Now I check almost every time to make sure that I am getting my card on correctly. So here we go, two card fronts and the, let's see, what is this called? This is called the um, Wink of Stella, Wink of Stella glitter pen. And I pulled out that Wink of Stella glitter pen and my plan was just to add a little bit of glitter to those berries. And then I added glitter to this leaf. And then I added glitter to all the things. So I love this Wink of Stella pen because the glitter does not come off all over my desk like some kind of glitter bomb and it stays put, but it's so pretty. The downside is it doesn't really video well. In the photographs, you can see it better. In real life, it's amazing. When I got done adding Wink of Stella glitter to the berries and the leaves, I thought, hey, why not the poinsettias? Because you've seen them, right? The poinsettias at the grocery store somebody's gone and put glitter on those things. They're live plants and somebody put glitter on them. Like that is dedication to your poinsettia, man. I don't, yeah, I don't even know. <laughs> but poinsettias need a little bit of glitter too. Everything needs the glitter. You know, so I've got the glittery bow and the glittery centers and now I have the glittery everything with the wink of Stella pen. Here are my two cards for today. I hope you enjoyed my incessant rambling and mostly I hope you enjoyed the assembling of these two cards. I think they turned out beautifully. I love honeybees dyes. They are so creative and so inventive and they make beautiful, beautiful cards. Um, I'm so glad you came to see me today. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. I would love it if you have not done so already, if you would subscribe to my channel. I have included a couple of videos here for you to watch and that subscription button just to make it a little bit easier. Thank you so much for stopping by. I hope you have a really great day.